Hi everyone. So for this Bluetooth project, I've shown you the hardware, how it's wired up, and I've also shown you the code that gets flashed to it, which is in C++. The code gets the variables, not variables, it gets the inputs from the Arduino, from the sensors and stuff. And then it talks to the Bluetooth chip, if you remember the Bluetooth chip, like, uh, what's it called now? Uh, Rayax module. Um, and then it facilitates the communication between all of those. In turn, the Bluetooth module, the Rayax module, talks to the device, which is, in my case, the phone. And then that's pretty much it. But what I haven't shown you is the code that actually goes on the device. And I've chosen a platform or a framework called MAUI. And MAUI is Microsoft's attempt at a cross-platform framework, if you like. Um, although it's kind of a platform itself. I don't know the technical term. And I like this MAUI because it's Windows programmer friendly. And I'm a Windows programmer. I know I can program in C++ and some other ones, but... I prefer Windows and that's where my expertise is for the most part. So I'm familiar with the layout as well. So not only am I familiar with C Sharp and the sort of Windows approach, I'm familiar with this layout. So if any of you are web developers and sort of work more on the Windows side, this might be easier for you. So you might be familiar with this sort of concept here of markup and code behind and this is the same so it was a, it was something that sort of originated in in dot net uh web forms years ago so yes yeah, so we have the markup there which is responsible for the way the thing locks the user interface so we've got labels and grids and whatever the user interface stuff and then we've got the code behind here which determines how the actual thing works like the logic behind it and the logic behind the buttons and so on the other stuff here I'm not going to explain. Now, did I explain that you need a Nugget package? I think I did. Yeah, I did, didn't I? But I'll just show you again. Plugin.bla, Adrian Sekelanu, whatever, uh, however you spell that. Sekelinu. Sekelinu. Um, so you need that, right? So let's get going. Let's get going. I'm not going to explain absolutely everything because some of it, I guess would be very monotonous, like I could go on for an hour talking about this thing. But I'll show you the basics. So to start with, with BLE, everything has an ID. So you can have many, many, many devices. Each device has an ID. Each device can have services. Service is basically a collection of data. And each service has a collection of characteristics. So you can have an update characteristic, and a write characteristic, and other types of characteristics. And for the most part, we're going to be concerned with these two, update and write. And again, I'm not going to go into depth, but basically update is, is the special one because update is the one that updates the listener. So we need the IDs anyway. Now, to start with, when I looked at these, I was like, hey, they're the same, but they're actually not because you can see there, there's a tiny difference. Right, so again, if you're a Windows programmer, you'll be aware of this here, so I won't talk about that. But the first thing you need to do is request permissions. So we request permissions down here. I'm concerned that if I press F12, which is the key to skip to it, it will turn OBS off, which is my uh, screen recorder, because there's a hotkey for that as well. Anyway, request permissions, location and use. If you don't have that permission, it won't work. And you might be thinking, well, this is Bluetooth. I don't know, but you need that permission. So then, um, we're going to set some events. If a Bluetooth device is connected, then we say that connected on the user interface. If it's disconnected, we say disconnected on the user interface. And we change the button text. So if it's disconnected, then we want the button text to say connected. If it's connected, then you want the button te text to say disconnected. Okay, another event. So if the internal Bluetooth device, um, if the state gets changed to off, then we want to just update the user interface. And if it changes to on, we want to update the user interface too. So if I'm on the app and Bluetooth disconnected, it will come up saying Bluetooth disconnected. Okay. Set the status text. Oh, that's nothing. I don't need to explain that. It's basically get, just getting a label from the user interface and setting it. Request permissions I've already shown you. Now connect device. 
if Bluetooth is on, then set the connect time out um, and then check the permission for Bluetooth. So this is where it asks for Bluetooth permission. If it's granted, then carry on. If it's not granted, then wait until you know we've we've checked the request for Bluetooth. So if it is connected, we update the user interface and then we connect to a known device and it's got five seconds to do that. And it's provided with the device ID, which as I've told you before, I've got. I'll tell you about enumerating another time or maybe in the comments. But basically you need to get your device ID and the other IDs. Okay, so that's connecting. This connecting is, is pretty much the same in opposite. So if we disconnect, then we're gonna stop the update basically and disconnect. Um, we don't send the device ID to disconnect to because when it gets connected, it automatically uh, maintains a list of connected devices. So we say disconnect from device zero, which is device one. Okay, so that's that. Find a service. So each device has services, potentially many services, and each service has characteristics like I explained. So we, we update the user interface again, and then we get the connected device, and then we try to get the service, and we provide it with a service ID. Like I said, everything has IDs. Um, if it's not null, in other words, we know the service, then we update the user interface and say, yeah, we're all okay here. If a service isn't found, we say, no, we're not okay. Um, we've got uh, an error handler there. And then we return whether or not we found the service to whoever called it. And then down here, we find the characteristics. Now the characteristics is the same idea as, as finding the services pretty much. Although with the characteristics, I'm looking for two characteristics and not one. So the code here is to find two. So there's the ID for one and there's the ID for another. And it goes away and tries to find the characteristics. Uh, some user interface stuff again. This here, right. So we're making an event here, a new event and it's for value updated. Value updated is the event that occurs when when the, the phone detects that the Bluetooth device it's connected to is trying to send it an update. So if if it's received something and it's like, oh, here's an update from the Bluetooth device, then this event gets triggered and we go to this code here. So this here, value updated. So if we get an update, then we go down here, to this here and this basically gets the the value of the thing that's been updated and it splits it and does, does whatever it wants to do with it so if you remember rightly when i send the data from the arduino i send it like a voltage and then a hyphen and then a temperature and then basically here in this device i uh, not device in this um, bit of code i split the data I get the numbers, convert them to numbers, blah, 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 and I do something with it. So if it's in a range, then it change the, change the color of something to green. If it's out of range, change the color to red. Just uh, just purely for a warning, you know, oh, this number is out of range, it's red, you know, just a visual display thing. Um, and yeah, and then I update the user interface. Now let's go back up to where we were, where were we here? So yeah, it's nothing dissimilar to what you've already seen in other methods. So start update, again, use your interface stuff. Now what's different about this is we get the right characteristic. If you remember, there's two characteristics, there's write and update. We get the one that we can write to and we send it this text here. And before we send it the text, we have to convert to ASCII because otherwise it wouldn't make sense, you know? because of course electronics don't understand letters, they understand bytes, ons and offs. So convert it to bytes and then send it. When the Arduino gets the text, which it's always waiting for, if it gets text start updates, it's like, oh, I'll start updating. Otherwise it wouldn't update if you remember the code from Arduino. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what we're doing there. So start updates means, um, you know, I'm gonna be listening to you now. So then stop updates is the is the opposite pretty much. It gets the Arduino and says to it, oh, just stop the updates now. I'm going to disconnect, that sort of thing. So again, we get the text, convert it to ASCII, 
and then the Arduino reads it. Ah, oh, it told me to stop, so I'll stop now. And reset everything, update the user interface. I've shown you this updated thing here. Um, connect and disconnect is pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think I need to show you that, and I think I've probably already covered it anyway. Start and stop, so this is a big one. So on the main page, this is the, the first button, or probably the only button that you click on the top right, and it says start. So you press it and it starts, it connects and all that sort of stuff. So it um, so remember at this point here, the connecting thing would have already been done. So you can just press start or stop. So what it does is that um, it finds the service on the device. And after it's found the service, it finds the characteristics and then it stops. Sorry, it starts. But I've kind of... I'm kind of showing you this in retrospect because I've already shown you the other methods. And then, of course, if the button says stop and you press stop, then it stops. Again, I've shown you that already. And then there's some more user interface update stuff. So although it took me a while to code this and it took me a while to research how it works and stuff, it isn't overly complicated, really. And like I said, it's only 350 lines. Um, and it works well. It works very well. So there you go, there's the code for that. So now I've shown you the hardware, I've shown you how to wire it up with the little Bluetooth module, I've shown you the C++ code that gets flashed onto the Arduino that facilitates the communication, and now I've shown you this, which is the MAUI code, which, after compiled, you could use it on a phone, a tablet, an iOS device, or a Windows device. Maybe I could actually show you on this, but the issue is, is that... Um, I don't know how it's going to deal with Bluetooth, where on the phone it does have Bluetooth. Um, is it going to work? Let's have a look. Deploy succeeded. Where is it then? So here's the make-believe tablet. Is it going to work? No. Okay. So I'll show you on the phone then. So on the phone I go to the app. Let's just take that off. I go to the app, which looks like that. Now, I don't know if you can see on the right and left, there's connect and start. I don't know if it's going to focus. Maybe it can't focus. How about now? Yeah, I see. Connect and start. Now, if I had the device nearby, I could click connect and it will connect. And then there'll be messages down below saying connected. And now if I start, it will start getting the details but I've shown you that in video one I think so have a look at that if you're interested okay thanks for watching bye